Here it is, GGB, co-host, oh uh, no, co-host Puffers. Today we're going to cover the Buccaneers and Eagles. Buccaneers share over seven points on Fox on the Thursday Night of Football. Um, for a second, though, I know, I don't think politics most in the channel. Mainly because I think sports and politics should be entirely different, separate. I made, like, one political video, I think, the entire time. Like, I've even been on here, right? One, I think it was just me defending my favorite quarterback of all time, Drew Brees. It, like, it wasn't really that strange um a lot of people like get like are some people really annoy me it, like especially people on my side of the app you don't know i'm a little bit more right-leaning uh but like people that are like we gotta bit we gotta like protest the nfl and not watch them like you just don't care about the nfl if you can just say that just straight up if you can just say well just stop watching it obviously you don't care enough then like your protest means nothing to me i honestly don't care i could i don't give a shit but Honestly, like, this thing really made me angry. The Buccaneers taking J John Gruden out of their Hall of Fame. And I'm probably going to make another video about the Raiders and talk about a little, bit, a little bit more about what John Gruden did there. But I don't care what he did. Like, outside of freaking murdering a child or being like O.J. Simpson, I don't think he should be removed from the Buccaneers Hall of Fame. This man, you have two Super Bowl ring guys, two, don't get ahead of yourself. I mean, like, if the Saints just like, oh, we'll just get rid of Sean Payton from our Hall of Fame. The heck? No, of course not. Or, like, we'll just get rid of Drew Brees. Like, it makes no freaking sense. He is one of the people who got you a Super Bowl ring. Let's not act like you were a good team before John Gruden got there. John Gruden got there. You won the Super Bowl. John Gruden left there. You guys sucked for so many years. John Gruden was so much of your success in the Super Bowl run, and you're just going to toss him out. Just toss them on a... Just screw the box. Guys, just absolutely screw the box. Oh, my God. If you had any question whether they had any sort of integrity at all, it should be gone now. Because they don't they don't freaking care what you did for them in the past. Um, they just... They don't care. They they're absolutely have no integrity. Freaking... I would say a bad word. The box. Okay, F the box. I don't care. They suck. But... Honestly... Their sprout of injuries somewhat deserved for what they've done to John Gruden. Oh, so who's not going to be in this Buccaneers game? Pretty obvious who's not going to be in it. If you've been following the news, there's a lot of people that might be out for this game. Tight end Rob Gronkowski is 100% out with a ribs injury. So that leaves backup O.J. Howard, who was a 2017 first-run pick out of Alabama, if you don't remember, who was very good before Rob Gronkowski got there. And Cameron Bright, who's also a very good player, seventh-round pick out of Harvard. Uh, so, like, it's not that much of a downgrade with no Rob Gronkowski. Center Ryan Jensen, uh, has a hip injury. He had a full practice Wednesday, but he's questionable for this game. He's probably going to play through the injury, but if not, Robert Hainsey, their 2021 third-round pick, so rookie out of Notre Dame, is going to play. Uh, defensive end, again, another questionable. We have Pat O'Connor. He's the backup defensive end. He has a calf injury. Full practice Wednesday. It was 2017 seventh-round pick out of Eastern Michigan. Kind of more like depth on that line. They don't, they don't have any depth, honestly, really, all that much. But you really have Indomitian Sue, William Golston, uh, Vita Bay, and that's it. That's your defensive line, really. Uh, left outside linebacker, Jason Pierre-Paul, uh, has a shoulder injury. He's, he had full practice Wednesday, but he's going to be questionable. Uh, Anthony Nelson is listed as official backup on almost all depth charts. Uh, if you don't know who the Anthony Nelson is, he was a 2019 fourth-round pick at Iowa. Um, but I'm really looking at that right outside linebacker. If, uh, if JPP can't play, Joe Tryon, Joe Tryon, Schwinka, uh, he was 2021 first round draft pick out of Washington. I feel like if JPP cannot go today, it will be Tryon in his place. And then the long shot for winning that job is Cam Gill, the second year player out of Wagner. I just, I don't see it happening. I think it's going to be Nelson or Tryon. I'm, I'm leaning towards Tryon if JPP can't go tonight. Right inside linebacker, Lamonte David, is an ankle injury, so he's out for this game. The interesting thing about that is, I don't know, I don't. Tryon's an outside linebacker. Normally, you don't move the outside linebacker to play the inside linebacker position, but, I mean, you could, technically speaking. There's, there's, a, there's a pretty significant learning gap and difference, but, I mean, it's not horrible. You could conceivably do it, but, again, he's a rookie. I wouldn't. So you have K.J. Britt, uh, who's listed as official linebacker, uh, backup, right inside linebacker, 2021, fifth-round pick out of Auburn. Uh, and then you have the backup for left inside linebacker, Kevin Minter. He was a 2013 second-round pick out of LSU. So it just 
depends on who you trust more. Obviously, KJ Britt is a rookie, um, but he's he's put in some solid minutes so far for the Buccaneers. And then you have Kevin Minter, who's again a veteran, so interesting there. Uh, and then they have Grant Sturd, who's again just like uh, Gill. He's he's a long shot, but he was a 2021 seventh round pick out of Houston. Uh, so he's a long shot to win that starting game, but he could end up seeing more time thanks to the Levante David injury. Um, most people know about the injuries they've had at corners, starting two corners, Sean Murphy Bunting, the 2019 second round pick out of Central Michigan, has an elbow injury. And he's he's on IR and he's out to at least week seven, which honestly seemed good in that first week. I thought he broke his arm, but again, it turned out to just be an elbow injury. But uh, that means the early season can go back is next week, which is good. You're getting reinforcements back if you're the, uh, the Bucks, But again, Still got to survive this week in Carlton Davis, their 2018 second round pick out of Auburn. Had a quad injury. He's on IR till week eight. So you're getting them back soon. You just got to survive this week. So that means Jamel Dean, the 2019 third round pick out of Auburn, uh, is going to end up being that number one corner. And then obviously, Shine Richard Sherman out of free agent to be that number two corner. Honestly, the corners are a little bit weak, um, but I don't know about the passing game for the Eagles. And then obviously, one big injury left. Strong safety, Antoine Winfield Jr. as a concussion. He's out for this game. Their third string guy is also out for this game. I think it's worth mentioning because, again, that leaves only one official strong safety on the roster, and that's Andrew Adams, the six-year player out of UConn. But then also, I think you got to consider that the free safety, the backup free safety on this team could also end up switching to strong safety for this game at least. Uh, Mike Edwards, 2019 third-round pick out of Kentucky. I feel like Antoine Winfield Jr., I believe, was out for the first game of the season and uh, I feel like Mike, Ed if I remember correctly, Mike Edwards did play in his spot. So I feel like Mike Edwards is the logical pick for this week. But again, don't, don't forget Andrew Adams. He could also end up seeing some significant playing time. Eagles only have two really new injuries. Now, obviously, they had the Brandon Graham injury at the beginning of the year. Um, but I don't feel like I need to mention that. Most people know about it. Tight end Dallas Goddard is going on the COVID reserve list. I don't remember how long that is normally, but... He is going to be out for this game, which means Zach Ertz, 2013 second round pick out of Stanford, who again is a pro bowler. He's very good. He's going to end up being the number one tight end. So the number two tight end is lo likely going to be Jack Stoll. He's a, an, he was an undrafted player this year out of Nebraska. Or uh, Tyree Jackson, his first year player. Uh, uh, he's been in the league for one year. He was a quarterback at Buffalo. Um, and he switched to tight end. He made some plays in the preseason, so keep an eye on him. He's supposed to be back from IR this week. He's expected back this week. So he could be a number three tight end option for this team. And then the only other injury for the Eagles they have is right tackle Lane Johnson. It's not an injury, but he's, it's a personal reason he's out for this week, which leaves three really options. Uh, Jack Driscoll is listed as his official backup. Uh, he was 2020 fourth round pick out of Auburn. But Andre Dillard is listed as the official backup left tackle, but I feel like he has a better chance of switching over a right tackle and winning the starting job because Andre Dillard was a 2019 first round pick out of Washington State. And then I feel like the long shot for this job, but he is on fact on the roster, so I think I should mention him. Brett Toth, he's a third year player out of Army. I feel like it's a long shot for him to win that starting gig, but you know, you never know. So I went over all the injuries. Let's just talk about the Buccaneers real quick. They are. What, four and one, four and one on the year, um, and they look good doing it. Tom Brady has a little bit of a hand injury. I forgot to mention, but again, probably not going to affect much. Uh, I think the Buccaneers are a really good football team, and I, I really am sad to say that because uh, the Saints team, I freaking hate the Buccaneers, and I need them to lose this football game. Eagles have been better than expected, I guess I can say, but still not great. They're like. They're, they're third place in the division, right? They're ahead of the Giants, which honestly did not expect that after a couple of weeks. But uh, Dallas, New York said to deal with some different injuries. But the Eagles, they look good last week against the Panthers. So, again, the Panthers are likely the second best team in the division. Although, I feel like you could make an argument the way the Saints are playing lately that they're the best team in the division, especially since the Saints are actually going to get a lot of phenomenal players back after the bye. Um, but the Eagles... They've looked better than I thought they would, honestly. Um, Jalen Hurts hasn't looked horrible starting. And honestly, their, their scheme, that is, they're basically planned to look like a Ravens team. It hasn't worked horribly. Uh, honestly, you have Jalen Hurts, who's a running quarterback. Honestly, if you look at the team, they're setting it up to look exactly like the Ravens, which, I mean, props to you. Ravens are a successful football team, but... Jalen Hurts is a very similar quarterback to Lamar Jackson. Don't think he has the same arm that Lamar Jackson does, but similar player. 
Um, you have two solid running backs in Miles Sanders and uh, Kenneth Gainwell, um, which is what the Ravens had heading into this year, and Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. Uh, and then you had uh, you have the the tight ends. Tight ends is a big thing. Uh, again, Dallas got out for this game, but Zach Hurts is a very reliable option. And then you obviously have the Ravens' favorite target is Mark Andrews. And then the receivers, you have many of them that work, and they're very similar players. Uh, Jalen Rager, Devontae Smith, uh, Quiz Watkins. These are all some players that are very similar. There's no very big receivers that are going up to go up there and meet the ball, but they're very similar receivers. Um, the only thing I have a problem with this Eagles team is the offensive line is nowhere near as good as the Ravens offensive line, and losing Lane Johnson is going to be really difficult for this team. But again, on Thursday night, Normally, you go with the underdogs. The underdogs normally cover. That is a trend that has happened on Thursday Night Football for a long time. Again, uh, short week means, especially with the Bucks facing all the injuries, I think this game is going to be closer than most people expect, especially since it's in Philly. Um, give me the Bucks to win, but the Eagles to cover. Hey, everybody, this is GGB saying adios. Adios.